Alright, so today I'm going to discuss the engineering design process, which is, fairly self-explanatory, the process that engineers go through to design something. Now, the first step of this process is to identify a problem. Now, this problem can really be anything. It doesn't have to necessarily be anything huge, like how to solve global energy increase, or how to get a man on Mars. It can be really anything that you think humans have as a problem. Like, for example, a comparatively small problem, like how to get people out of the top floor of a burning skyscraper, just as an example. Now, keep in mind that for whatever you're going to be designing, you'll probably need funding, so you'll probably need to choose a problem that other people will think is a problem. In fact, more than likely, if you're doing engineering work, you'll probably be assigned a problem. Now, the next step in the design process is you need to research your problem, whatever it may be. So, let's say that you want to design a VTOL that will take off from land and fly over to rescue people out in the ocean. Well, what individual things does the VTOL need to do in order to accomplish this one larger task? Well, first off, it needs to be fairly fuel efficient to fly what will likely be a fairly long ways, potentially halfway across the ocean and then back. Gonna need to be good fuel efficiency. Secondly, it'll need to be fairly resistant to corrosion, because there'll probably be a bunch of salt spray that'll get on it, and salt water does not make things last a while. It kind of destroys them. Uh, also, you're going to need to give it a fairly good ability to hover and just search around for people, because it's not going to find it immediately as it flies over. It's going to need to do a little bit of searching. Additionally, it's going to need to be able to rescue all the people. Say you find an entire life raft, or like three life rafts. You'll want to have the capacity to accommodate all those people. You don't have to fly back and then have to fly back out over the ocean to get them, because they could have left by that point, floated away somewhere, or they could have died due to exposure. You want a good capacity. Also, because you're trying to sell it, you'll want to make it as cheap as you can. The cheaper you can make it, the more you'll be able to sell of it, no matter how good it is. And this doesn't even count all the government regulations that will be in place that require the safety for the vehicle. So, the point is, research all the individual tasks your design will need to do in order to solve the larger problem. Now we get to the actual design part of it. So, let's say you're making a new, highly advanced prosthetic. Well, draw a sketch to indicate what you thought it might look like. Maybe indicate the points of articulation, so people can know kind of how it would move. You might also want to jot down a few notes, such as what materials you intend to make it out of, or how you plan to have the thing controlled. Microchip to the brain, possibly? You'll also want to be sure you include all of those individual problems you found while researching your one larger problem. Essentially, this is just a time to get all of your ideas down on paper. Now, engineers work in teams. It's never just one engineer solving a problem. It's always a group of them covering a wide variety of disciplines. And it's at this point, when you'd all get back together, and share your designs, and discuss among them which would be the best. So, let's say you're on a team of engineers designing a glider, and you've got each of these four different designs, and you have to choose which among these is the best. Well, you'd go through, look at each of them, and debate among the engineers, and figure out which will be the best. And then you'd select that design, or potentially hybrid design, and go with that. Now, this is done simply because other people have ideas you simply don't think of. By the way, in case you're curious, for a glider, this would be the best design. The long wings create a high lift-to-drag ratio at such low speeds. After selecting a design, you need to use it to build a prototype for testing. Unfortunately, you can't just break out a box of Legos and build it from that. However, you don't need to build your prototype the way it will actually be built. So, for example, let's say you want to test the aerodynamic efficiency of this new car. Well, you don't need to build a prototype out of metal and plastic the way the actual car would be built. You can simply build it out of foam. 
because all you really want to test is the aerodynamic efficiency, so as long as you've got the shape right, the test will be fine. Or, let's say, for example, you want to test this new type of bridge. Well, you can probably just build the bridge out of toothpicks, and then just compare how much weight that toothpick bridge will hold relative to an actual toothpick. The point is, build for what you're testing. Now, as I just mentioned, you need to do tests. So, take your car prototype, put it in a wind tunnel, and measure the forces it experiences at various wind speeds. Or, take your bridge and slowly start adding weights onto it until it breaks. Now, it's very important that you do these tests incrementally. So, don't just put 10 kilograms on your bridge right away. Yeah, it'll break, and you'll know it can't hold 10 kilograms, but you won't know its breaking point. That's far more important. So, do it slowly, like add 100 grams at a time, and then mark the amount of 100 grams you have on there when it breaks, so that way you'll know a more exact number as to how much weight the bridge can hold. Now, after you've performed tests to see how well your design will do in various situations, you need to present your results. Even if your design was a complete failure, present your results. The reason failure is as valuable as success in science is because it shows people what not to do. However, people are only going to know what not to do if you publish your results. So no matter what, publish your results. Now, your first, or more likely than not, first several designs probably didn't work out. Now, while you should still let people know about that, i.e. present and or publish your results, you do still have a problem to solve. So, go back through, use what you learned from your tests, and start again. So use what you learned, and fix your problems. Maybe your prosthetic arm needs another point of articulation. Or maybe you need to add another stretch to your toothpick bridge. Or maybe the wings need to be shorter. They're just a bit too long. Whatever it is, go through, start the process over again, and fix your design.